Hello everyone, uh, my name is Natalie and we are here at the Bodega Marine Lab today. And we just wrapped up a really large maintenance day. You're such a cute little baby, look at your face. <laughs> here is our red abalone, number 245. Oh, oh my gosh, just got so scared. And we are in the middle of a nutritional study with two different sizes of juvenile red abalone. Prior to starting this experiment and the different treatment group diets, these abalone were all individually tagged. So that's over 400 abalone with these tiny little tags on them so that we can track their individual growth throughout the experiment. <laughs> so during our study, we're looking at two different abalone size classes. One is about a two-year-old range, which we're gonna see at 20 to 30 millimeters in length. And then we're looking at about a one-year-old age, which is around 10 to 15 millimeters in length. What we did earlier today is we took out all of the dulse algae that they have been eating since Monday out of their tanks. And we weighed it to see how much that they consumed. Along with um, analyzing their consumption rates, we also are looking at the, their fecal matter to see how much organic material they are processing over these two days. So the background for this study is we are growing dulse, which is a red seaweed commonly found along the California coast at three different temperatures. And and this temperature, these temperature ranges mimic climate change conditions, and these temperatures can affect the nutritional value of the dulse. They're being fed these three different treatments uh, that are the different temperature ranges, and we are looking to see if these, this nutritional difference affects the growth rates of these juvenile abalone. Since they are so small, we're expecting to see a fair amount of growth in a shorter amount of time versus doing it on some of the larger abalone that we have here at Bodega Marine Lab. We have 24 different troughs, and each of these troughs house either three abalone of the larger juvenile size or 12 abalone of the smaller juvenile size. So if you're looking at our tank design here, we actually have used restaurant silverware trays to create our replicates for this experiment. Now each of these troughs are lined uh, with green astroturf, and this design of the tank actually mimics commercial abalone farms, just in a smaller size. So this astroturf actually deters the abalone from wanting to crawl out. Uh, they are very curious animals, and they also are very strong. So they will try and you know hit these lids off or climb over uh, into different troughs if that astroturf wasn't on there. Otherwise, we have these like manifolds up here. All of the water is being pumped down individually. It will uh, the nice cylindrical flow allows it to be pulled across to the drain, and then it drains out into the wet table system here. <laughs> cylindrical form here in Dr. Jackson Gross's lab. This study is not only going to help conservation aquaculture for endangered and threatened abalone species, it's also going to help inform commercial abalone aquaculture here in California. We are, <laughs> you're like saying it with your mouth. <laughs> I'm like, uh, what is he saying? What does he want me to say? Okay, going to aid in the farming of commercial abalone farms in California. <laughs> commercial abalone aquaculture farms. Commercial abalone aquaculture in California. So now I have to say it again. Yeah, and that's a wrap.